Hi and welcome, it's Dale Darley. This is Writing to Heal. Change your story, change your life. I want to take you on a little tour through what journaling is and how you know help you to get started. Well, journaling is basically writing all of your thoughts, feelings, and experiences and observations into a journal. And I do it daily. I find it extremely cathartic. I get lots of clarity and I also get a lot of healing from it. So the opportunity that you get from journaling is you can freely express yourself. And when you've, once you've written and you've left it and then you come back and reflect, you can make some really good meaning. You can change aspects of your life and start to find a sense of inner peace and harmony. So you live with yourself in a better state, a better frame of mind. It helps you to heal and it enables you to take action, good conscious action. Now we all have unconscious patterns, you know, ways that we think that, that feel natural to us and we're often unaware of these unconscious patterns. And through journaling, what we can do is we can start to recognize them and then do something about them if we so choose. Now, the wonderful thing about journaling is there aren't any rules. Yes, you can get prompts and, you know, yes, you can get guidance. But, you know, the best thing is to find your way and find the right environment and have that desire to do it. And when you choose to do it, you will get it done. Now, what I love is taking the things that are in my journal and doing what I call creative life writing. And that's basically just writing, writing my story in another way so that I can see things from different perspectives. You know, if you think about a novel, you know, it has all the different characters, it has a plot, a conflict, there's always a message in it. And I always like to think that there's a gift in every single one of our challenges and that brings healing. And these stories put us in control. So it enables us to reframe and see things in a, in a very, very different way. And we can very much change the outcome. And often they can be fun because you just let your imagination run wild. Now, the other thing that comes out of journaling is that you might uncover a desire to write a book and then your journaling becomes a lot more powerful. Now, I've journaled for many, many years and my journaling has enabled me to write many, many books. Now, the other thing that, um, that, that journaling has, has done for me is not only have I written these books, I'm currently writing a book called You, Me and Osteoporosis. So as soon as I got the diagnosis that I had osteoporosis, I had spinal fractures, the first thing I did, I started a brand new journal. And that's really helped me writing the book. And I did the same thing a couple of years ago when I went through this massive journey of self-love. And I have a book in edit called Journey to Self-Love. And these two books have really helped me to heal. So You, Me and Osteoporosis. The book came out of me starting to journal and starting to think about how I could help other people and that journal gave me clarity, peace of mind, it became my research tool and it enabled me to remember the sequence of events and the things that happened when I came to write the book. And from there I decided to start a blog and I also decided that I would campaign to raise the awareness for people going through osteoporosis, people who were newly diagnosed and who were lost, confused, overwhelmed, bewildered, scared, all of those things that happen when you first get a diagnosis of something that is, is you know, utterly life-changing. And, you know, I needed to, to heal and move out of that state of fear that I was in and stay in love and faith. So journaling has just, you know, been incredible. Okay, let's get started. And I want you to think about how you do things how you do anything is how you do everything is a, is a saying that I hear many, many times. But when you know how you learn, then you can take steps to getting things done. 
and you understand why you work in the way that you do. Now, I, I hear people talking about journaling and saying, oh, I can't possibly do it, and it doesn't work for me, and, and et cetera, et cetera. But when we start to uncover why they say that, it's because they're not working, let's say, according to their learning style. So let's just imagine for a moment you're going on a journey. So what, what, do, what do you do? How do you do it? Do you ask a friend for directions? Do you plan the route? Do you use a sat-nav or do you use a printed map? Or do you just think, well, I know where it vaguely is, so I'll, I'll just kind of follow my nose and I'll get there. So just think about that for the moment, you know, how you might do that journey. So I like to look at people who are doing their journaling or their writing in four different ways. The what, the how, the why, and the what if people. So some people, their motivation comes from within them. Some people are very practical and hands-on. Some people are very outgoing, sociable, and emotional, and they like to know why they do things. And the what ifs are very, very curious. So just take a look at that for the moment. Now you've obviously got slides to look through, so I won't read all of that out, but isn't that curious that we work in a particular way? But it might be that you're a what person followed by a why person, or a how followed by a what if. You know, you are a combination because you have your particular way of liking to do things. So, for example, I like to work in the quiet. I can't stand the loud noise. I like to write in um, my journal in bed. If I'm actually writing a book, I'll either do it in bed, on the sofa, or on, on the computer here in my office. And I'm very much a what person because I'll sit and research to the nth degree. And um, although I'm immensely creative, very visual, I see a lot of the big picture, I, I kind of need to know how something works and that kind of logical fact. So I, I'm probably I'm probably a combination of all of them. And you might find that you are. But I always start with the what. I like to research things. And then I want to work out how. And then I think about, you know, like the why. And then I do the uh, kind of scenario planning. The other thing to really think about is, are you a project or a timetable person? So a project person likes fresh, new and exciting. So I actually have several different kinds of journals by the side of my bed. I have my osteoporosis one, I have my gratitude one, and then I have a, a business planning journal. Some people like to do the, the same thing every day at the same time doesn't work for me. So think about that as well and that will help you get into your journaling. You must, must, must get your environment right for you and as I said understand your preferred way of journaling and writing but also understand your capabilities, your skills and your abilities. It's no good starting something if you don't feel that you're able to or there's some other things that you need to sort out you know, stuff that, that's kind of standing in your way. But literally, I, I swear, all you need is a journal, a pen, the right environment, and understand how you like to journal and write. So understand what you believe is the right way for you, and find that right way, and ask what's important to you. When you understand you, you will find a way that works for you. And then just keep coming back to this, the purpose of why you're journaling. You know, the gratitude journal is very much about putting me in a frame of mind that says, I want to remember every day 10 things that I am really grateful for. And my osteoporosis one, as I've said, I'm using for my book, but also for, for research. Remember, don't be too hard on yourself and allow yourself to find your muse. And you find your muse by switching off the stuff that's going on inside your head. So, your action plan is very simple. Go and buy yourself a journal. Get yourself a pen and work out how journaling is going to work for you. And practice writing in a few different places, a few different times of the day. Try it with music, try it without music. 
you know, do, just keep exploring and you'll find the right way. That's great. Now you've started. The next important thing is that you really connect to your muse and you write from the heart. And that basically means is you let go of judgment. You do not have to have some kind of master's degree in writing to journal. When you connect to your heart and you write from your heart, you become one with who you are. And you can take responsibility for loving yourself and then your life will change. So what we're doing is we're creating a really deep connection to our soul and you'll start to hear the whispers from your soul. That might be lines of songs, it might just be words in your head, you might start to notice thing, things, but you've now got a team on your side and you've connected to your divine inner wisdom and you are going to get lots and lots of guidance provided you keep an open mind and an open heart and you start to notice what's going on and scribble it in your journal. You can also start to hear what your body is saying to you. One of the things that I do is I scan my body. So right now I'm feeling very uncomfortable. My fractures are hurting. I need to get up and I need to start moving. So as soon as I've done my video, I'm going to I'm going to move. But every evening I kind of tune in and I ask what's going on you know I also think about you know what am I not noticing and let me just ask you you know what would it mean to you to actually listen to your body because what it means to me is I get a better sense of what's going on I get a better sense of how I need to treat myself how I need to love myself and care for myself so be authentic just be yourself if you, you know, if you want to hide your journal because you think someone's going to read it, then do it. Write your journal online, but actually writing with a pen is way more powerful. You know, healing has to come from within you. You have to make a choice that you want to heal. I use lots of affirmations. I am healed. It's already done. So although I'm going through the process of changing my nutrition, taking supplements and getting treatments and, and various other things, I know the healing comes from in here. So, you know, make and allow yourself to, to let go of whatever's holding you back and work towards the person that you know you are. You have all of the resources you need, they're all inside of you. And you can heal yourself, that's all you need to know. Everybody given the right ingredients can heal. So please don't waste your pain. You know, pain is a signal for change. Conflict is an opportunity to address something that needs to change. Use your pain, whether it's emotional, physical or spiritual, to understand you. Acknowledge, accept and use what comes up to help you to heal. Have faith. Faith is what keeps us going, keeps, certainly keeps me going and find that happy place from within and your journal will help you to do that so when you start to write you take your focus to your heart i always place one hand on my heart and one hand on my solar plexus so your tummy and i close my eyes and i just allow some kind of a connection and then i ask a question now sometimes i'll write a question and then i'll make the connection to my muse and then I wait till I hear something, doesn't matter what it is, just whatever comes into your head, and then I just start scribbling. So try it, try it, see what comes up for you. I'd be really interested to, to hear what you have to say. So the question I have for you is, are you willing to question that old sense of who you are so that you can move from fear and into a person who loves themselves? And are you ready to create the foundations of who you are from a place of no judgment and acceptance? Big questions, eh? So writing is creating a relationship with you and we're creating the most important relationship of your life and that's with yourself. 
Because if you want to have relationships with other people, whether that is face-to-face or through the written word, if you're going to write a book, you've got to learn to trust who you are. And that's you. You are the most important person in your life. So let's start to think about how we get that flow going. So it's, you know, being open, surrendering and being a conduit for your words. And your words can flow to you and then out into the world because you'll become a different kind of person. And flowing means, you know, visualising. I I always visualise that my spine is filling up with with fabulous um, nutrients and I'm healing and I'm getting well. And then when I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming of some novels that I want to write for the future. And I also look at some of my most awful patterns, habits and beliefs. And I'm learning and I've learned to change my mindset. It's all about flow. We move all the time. Everything is always moving. So I'd like you to think about you know, your journaling and, and allowing it to help you to examine your worth and your value. So just a few questions for your journal. You know, ask yourself what you know about your, your worth and your value now. You know, when you write things that are not so good, change those statements around, so reframe. Constantly examine why you might feel in a particular way and turn these things into mantras. So for example, you might say, I'm useless at creative things. And then you might say, I release all negativity and resistance to my creativity. And then you might say, in the positive, in the now, I am creative and I express my creative creativity in everything I do. You may hate your body. Now, I went through this. Remember, your body hears absolutely everything you say. So your mantra might be, I love and accept all parts of me. I am beautiful and I thank my body for working. So over to you. So there's just some, a few ideas to kickstart you and get you on this, this journaling malarkey. It's absolutely wonderful. So my question is, is what does your heart tell you about what you want to write? So thank you. My name's Dale Darley. I'm from daledarley.com. I'm also from the soulwritersacademy.com and naturalosteoporosis.com. You can find me on Facebook. I have a free group called Writing for the Soul. I'd love you to come and join me and share what you learn in your journal. I write prompts every day, so you will get better connected to you and you can share some of what's going on in your life with the people that you connect with. So that's me for now. Dale Darley, I'm signing off. Lots of love.